Australia, home of the possum, cool surfer dudes, strange lingo, now worries mate, fair dinkum, lots of sunshine and the Bonza Barrier Reef. It's the biggest, most spectacular coral reef in the world, and what's more, every creature is linked to another. Just imagine one huge family tree dating back 18 million years. From the minuscule to the mammoth to the miraculous, they're all connected in Barney's Barrier Reef. Oh, yeah, tell me about it. Man United should have never let him go. What's that? More sand, yeah, sure. It's just the good stuff, just for you, that. <clears throat> oh, hey, Jem. I'm getting really attached to these ocean creatures, you know. This is Colin, the sea cucumber. Hi, mate. He's got a name. Colin. But he's not really a mate, though, is he, Barney? <gasps> Don't you listen to her, Colin. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Well, what I mean is that, you know, he's not a real mate that can give you advice for you to hang out with and do cool stuff with, like, uh, <clears throat> real friends? No, I see where you're going with that one. Don't worry, Jem, you're still my busy mate. So it's just that Colin needs my support right now. It's a sea cucumber. He eats and poos sand. <laughs> it lives in the ocean. It's got loads of friends here. Ah, yes, the ocean is full of friendships. It's very much a I'll scratch your back and you scratch mine. In other words, our fishy friends hook up because they need each other to survive. But just like in the real world, some friends are closer than others, and some you could probably live without. <clears throat> sea cucumbers. Hey, you leave Colin out of this. Yeah. Are you OK, Wormy? You want a cup of tea? There's on a piece of cake. Or do you want a jabby dodger? This is fun. Peekaboo. Mine's better. I've got balloons. Where you hiding? Mum got me a pink one. <laughs> now, show me someone who doesn't love a clownfish. <laughs> clownfish? Now, they're not really very funny, though, are they? <gasps> uh, no, not really. They're apparently called clownfish because of the way they bob around in a clownish fashion when they swim. Ah, they're so cute. <laughs> huh? Meet our first best buddies, the anemone and clownfish. One is a stinging ball of tentacles. And one is a type of damselfish. They're unlikely best mates, but that's what they are. Cool! Clownfish have found a clever way of making friends with this blubbery tuffy. They coat themselves in the anemone's mucus, which protects the clownfish from being stung by their tentacles. It sounds like a bit of a one-sided relationship. OK for the clownfish with their bouncy castle anemone. But what does the anemone get out of it? Well, this is a classic reef symbiotic friendship. Kind of, I'll scratch your back and you scratch mine. The bouncy clownfish help to scare away other fish, like the butterfly fish. And they like to nibble on the anemone's tentacles. So it's a case of, I'll rub myself in your tentacles, cover myself in your snot, help chase off bigger fish, and then I can live in you, sting free. <laughs> yeah, it's cool, isn't it? What? The clownfish and the anemone have a fantastic friendship as they both stick up for and protect each other. <laughs> okay, Barney, yes. I'll wash up all your dirty dishes if you can spot a seahorse in that fan. I'll give you five seconds. Easy, all right. Starting now. He's over there. Oh, no, hang on, on the right. No, uh, he's over. Okay, top left. No, he's in the middle. Oh. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, Bad luck. Here he is. Isn't that just a piece of coral? Uh, hang on, the coral just moved. Oh, oh well, when you said seahorse, I was expecting one of these. I 
know. He is a funny-looking seahorse, and part of the reason his seahorse face has been replaced by this pig-like snout is because he has such a close friendship with this Gorgonian coral Hello. that he's done whatever he can to look just like it. Well, now, surely that's just too close a friendship. I mean, a little bit of dressing the same is understandable, but if my mate dressed exactly like me, I'd freak me out. <sighs> OK, officially freaked out. They're so like the coral, it's weird. It would literally be like me turning into my home to the last detail. Hang on a minute, though. They might want to look like their home, but are they really best mates? What does the coral get out of it? Yeah. Well, not much. I mean, it's like your friend who eats all your sweets and never gives you back any in return. But the coral doesn't mind. I guess some friendships are just like that. Barney, that's mine. OK, well, there you go. I don't want to be a pygmy seahorse friend. They were nice. The connection between our clownfish gang and pygmy seahorse and coral fan is that they both live with their best friends. Right then, who's our next chummy duo? <laughs> what has that crab got on his hands? Uh, oh, I mean his pincers. Well, he's got his hands full, OK? Full of ready-made mini stinging anemones. And the boxer crab hasn't got his own sting, so he borrows little anemones to ward off enemies. It can't be much fun for them being waved in the air like that. Oh, ouch! Be careful! Well, actually, there is a bit more give and take in this friendship. While the boxer crab has a ready-made weapon, he also uses his flowery hands to mop up leftovers, so the anemones get to eat as well. Hang on, how does he get to eat when he's got his hands full? He's got our hands free, so he calls for a takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. His legs have been specially adapted to rip off small bits of food from the sea floor and then bring them to the mouth. A bit like an elephant's trunk. It's clever, isn't it? Ah, well, he may be very clever, but he actually looks like he's cheerleading. Are ready? OK. C R A B carrying the anemones to keep away his enemies. Two, four, six, eight. Who do I appreciate the anemone? I'm so good at cheerleading. Oh, yes, more. So our bezzy mate boxer and anemone are connected to our pygmy and coral buddies because they each use each other for protection. <laughs> The mantis shrimp has never been a very popular member of the ocean community. A loner, he is often to be found underneath <laughs> rocks, alone. Or spring cleaning his hole, alone. Some think his tidiness obsession is to occupy his time because he has no friends. Aww, poor mantis shrimp. Ha, <laughs> never mind poor mantis shrimp, Gem. He's on his own for a reason. Oi! Mantis shrimp, leave that crab alone. Come on now, leave it out. Look, stop it, you're bigger than he is. Oh, well, now look what you've gone and done. You've broken his pizza, meanie. See, I told you, he's a big bully. And that's why he has no friends. What? But why is he beating that crab up? That was a bit unnecessary. Well, to be fair, he has to eat something, but he doesn't go for the easy kill. He likes to have a good punch-up first, which is why he has a bit of a reputation as an ocean bully. And with his supersonic eyes that can pick out his victims from miles away and a right hook that can smash through glass, he certainly has the right qualities. So he's friendless, <laughs> but it's easy to see why. So the mantis shrimp is a bully, and the boxer crab teams up with the anemones to protect himself from bullies. It's a bizarre bully connection. So who's our other connection to the boxer crab and his anemone friend? <laughs> is that a fish prison? They look trapped. This painful-looking spiky urchin and these cardinal fish are best buddies. G'day, urchin, mate. <laughs> Now, the clownfish and their bouncy anemones, I can understand. <laughs> but this can't be a comfortable place to hang out. I mean, what's the point? <laughs> what's the point? Because <laughs> they've got spikes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Oh. <laughs> ah, you're a wee man. Actually, it's a perfect hangout. See the black stripes on the cardinal fish? Yeah. Well, when these guys hang out in the urchin's long black spikes, their outline is disguised from predators. Oh, yeah. 
la la. I see, they are very crafty fish, yes, because they're making friends with all the pointy and stingy animals. Mm -hmm. I get it. Do the urchins get any benefit? Well, actually, no. They don't get anything in return. It's another one-sided relationship. But I guess if you're a big, scary, spiky urchin... <laughs> maybe you just need all the friends you can get. So, in other words, the sea urchins stick up for the cardinal fish. <laughs> they stick up like the spikes. <sighs> I think you should be locked up for those jokes. Anywhere but the fish prison, far too spiky for me. Anyway, moving on. Connection time. The boxer crab gets protection from his stingy anemone gloves. And the cardinal fish protects himself from the big bad reef by living in a spiky urchin fortress. So they both use their mates for protection. I wish I had a fortress. Aw, nice to see some real friends hanging out on the reef together. And look, Barney, I've what? made you a little sand turtle. Ah, that's nice. I'd have preferred a mountain bike, though. OK, it's time for a reef cap. So loads of the animals on the reef hang out with their mates and we've met some of the bestest friends ever. But how did we get all the way from the clownfish and his bouncy anemones to the locked up cardinal fish? Well, our first magnificent mates were the clownfish and anemone. The clownfish gets a bouncy castle home and the anemone gets a little more protection from those pesky butterfly fish. Next up, the pygmy seahorse and his close coral fan. A little too close, maybe, as the pygmy seahorse completely copies the coral fan. And if you're a little boxer crab who wants to be tougher than he is, I guess a portable anemone is just the trick to help scare away enemies. Luckily, the anemones get a feed along the way. Unlike the badly behaved mantis shrimp. Pick on someone your own size, shrimpy. Hey, he's not all that bad. Hey, he doesn't need sticking up for, unlike the crafty cardinal fish hiding away in the spiky sea urchin. Ah, oh, is that shell for me? No, it's mine. <gasps> You're so shellfish. <gasps> the glass shrimp and the mushroom coral with their delicate tentacles. Now, these pair are a match made in heaven. Coral, you're my best friend. They should be called invisible shrimps. Well, the glass shrimp, as their name suggests, are delicate little shrimps. <laughs> They're so see-through that sometimes you can only see them because of the coloured dots on their bodies. And being so titchy, they need a nice, comfy place to hang out. And where better than this spongy mushroom coral? Hey, is that a camera? Oh, fish, get out of the way. As I was saying, the mushroom coral is also quite a sensitive little fella. Uh, fish, out! But he's perfectly happy with the glass shrimp hanging out because it weighs so little. And I'm guessing the mushroom coral might also protect the little shrimp from naughty fish who want their camera close up. Oh, OK, fish, have your moment. Hi, Mum. Was that it? I've met caviar with more to say. So our little glass shrimp hides and plays in the mushroom coral and the cardinal fish hangs out with the sea urchin because they're both camouflage buddies. <laughs> now, who do these fellas remind you of? Hmm, look like Yoda, Andrew. Oh, hey, it's Yoda. I didn't know he could swim. Let's meet the spoilt brats of the reef, the remoras. Hmm. Remora fish hang out with the big boys of the reef like the magnificent manta here. They don't care that much about the manta. All they're after is a free ride, a free meal and free protection. <laughs> they choose any big fish they can hitch a ride with. Oh, I see. They're like those annoying friends you just can't get rid of. Give me some space. Go away. Back off, Basta. <laughs> They're the mate who nicks your lunch, borrows all your clothes and won't return them, and really doesn't do much to help you out at all. <laughs> Thank goodness you're not like that. But why don't the bigger fish just shrug them off? They can do without friends like that, surely. Ah, well, that's the problem. When I said they're hangers-on, I wasn't kidding. They have these Velcro-like pads on the tops of their head that suck onto big fish, meaning they can really hang on and on and on. So they get free lifts to wherever they want without having to lift a finger. Well, Finn without the girl. You're no friend of mine. They're such freeloaders, they don't miss a trick. Ew, did that Remora just eat shark poo? Yeah, they don't turn down any freebie, these guys, even poo. 
Like the glass shrimp and his mushroom coral, the remoras are not really mates with the mantas and sharks. They're just hanging out with them for the bonus benefits that come with it. What, poo? <laughs> Looks like this little fish has an unwanted hanger on as well. Yeah, that's a parasite. And for fish, these are pretty evil visitors. And this is one of those I'm gonna stick to your head and really annoy you variety. Can't the fish just brush it off or something? No, they don't have brushes. And this parasite is a bit like a leech. Once it's on, it's difficult to shake off and it can make the fish feel pretty poorly. Usually, the fish's mucus-covered scales help put off parasites, but sometimes, like all best-laid plans, that doesn't always work. And this sunfish is positively, or should I say, parasitely covered in them. This geezer is lucky because he has mates, the banner fish, and they're around to help nibble on the parasites. But our poor damselfish looks like he's stuck with this hanger-on for good. <laughs> I'm not leaving. Like our remoras who stick around with their so-called friends purely for selfish reasons, our parasites are one group of friends our damselfish could live without. Here you go. Ah, oh, thank you. Um, where are my sandwiches? Well, I couldn't find any witches, so I just got your sand. <laughs> I did a joke about sandwiches. OK, it's time for a reef camp. Ocean animals know a good friend when they see one. Unlike by here. Not true. I saw Colin earlier and I said hello. Our delicate little glass shrimp knows the best place to stay safe is in his mushroom bouncy coral. And they keep the coral pest free. And at least they both get on. Imagine having a load of friends that you just can't get rid of. A bit like the sponging remora. Very irritating. But not as much as having a giant parasite stuck to your head. There are some mates that are really not much fun, and this bloodsucker is one of them. I hope we're going to see some nice friendships in this half. You see, I think the key to a good friendship is communication. You know, when you can really talk to someone, you know they're listening. Uh, Tuesday. You weren't even listening, were you? Five o'clock. Oh, typical. Luckily, our next best mates are a little more considerate. <laughs> Well, they're happy little chappies. Who are they? As I said, the key to a good friendship is communication, and these buddies have it sussed. Let me introduce the cleaner Ras. As their name suggests, they spend their time cleaning up, nibbling nasties off the skin of fishes to stop them getting poorly. <laughs> hey, Barney, look, he's doing a little dance. <laughs> well, I'm glad he's enjoying himself, but why? Well, this is his way of saying, I'm free, hello, fishes, anyone want to clean up, I'll clean you good. Then why doesn't he just say that instead of showing off? Barney, fish can't talk. Oh, yeah. Duh. So they do a little dance instead. Oh, no. Well, how do the cleaner ass know which fish wants cleaning? They strike a pose. Come clean me. I'm ready. Give me a clean, eh? I need a scrub. Don't forget my left fin. Hey, thanks, mate. I'm ready for a scrub down. Hiya, mate. Give us a scrub down, will ya? This is a complete mutual appreciation friendship. The fish love the cleaner wrasse and the wrasse love the fish. You're my bezzy, mate. Do you know what? It's about time we had a proper friendship. Oh, do you need a clean up? Your spots are looking good. Your lips are looking good as well. Ooh, do you think? The wrasse have a real taste for the naked isopods. I'm sorry, what? The naked isopods, otherwise known as deadly parasites. They can make the fish very ill indeed. But are a real tasty snack for the cleaner wrasse. OK, so the wrasse get a nice feast of the, um, the, the naked... Naked isopods. That's what I said. And the fish get nice clean skin without infection, meaning that they can then swim along and get on with their day. Exactly. <laughs> so they're linked through sickness and health. <laughs> Wow, quite a display going on here. I know, these schools of fish are amazing, aren't they? Well, they're so graceful and well-coordinated. I mean, how do they do that? Is there like a Sergeant Major fish going, and to the left, to the right. All together, boys and girls, let's make a crazy ball. 
seriously, their timing is impeccable, isn't it? Well, yeah, that's because this is one tight-knit group of friends, all right? You're telling me? They even look the same. I know. They don't hang out of any old fish. They choose their schoolmates well. Ah, schoolmates. Very clever, Gem. <laughs> Why, thank you. <laughs> They're like those cliquey gangs who you can never get in with. But with the fish schools, it's all about sticking together for survival. If one fish finds a rich source of food, they all follow. Follow that fish. Doesn't it confuse their predators, though? It confuses and intimidates them. Ah! Predators may be fooled into thinking they're looking at one big fish, or that it's just too much like hard work. Ah, pesky fish balls. <laughs> there are also more eyes to watch for danger. Like a giant neighbourhood watch gang. Hey, Jem, what do you call a guy with loads of eyes? I don't know. See more. Because <laughs> he can see more. <laughs> oh. Like our cleaner wrasse and their fishy friends, our schools of fish also have a fantastic friendship and stick together for survival. Ah, it's good to know there are some nice friendships in the reef, eh? So, who's our next bosom buddy? <laughs> It's another shrimp cleaning up. Get a life, mate, seriously. Hey, don't shout at the shrimp or you may have to deal with the scary goby. If you're not from the burrow, you're not coming in. These fish are the shrimp bodyguards. They live together with the shrimp, and while the shrimp tidies and builds the burrow, the gobies keep watch. Sid, <laughs> keep an eye on that dodgy-looking geezer over there, would you? <laughs> Well, they take their work very seriously, don't they? Oh, yes. These gobies are not to be messed with. You looking at me? They're very protective over their mate Shrimpy here. Shrimpy, stay indoors. It's not safe. I'll just get rid of this rubble. And they're in constant contact with their Shrimpy buddies. The shrimp keeps its antennae touching the body of the goby, who flicks the shrimp with its tail when it's alarmed. Hey! Then they both scarper into the burrow and they're safe as houses. So, Jem, salt and pepper, bucket and spade, egg and spoon. I understand why they're pairs, but fish and shrimp? That's got to be the most unlikely pairing ever. Well, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but like all good friendships, I guess opposites attract. Plus, they both get lots from being buddies. The shrimp gets a warning of approaching danger, and the goby gets a nice and very clean home to lay its eggs. Ah, oh, how touching. Another life-saving friendship. Stay away from my shrimp friend. Both the fish schools and the shrimp and goby look after each other to help stay alive. So, who are our next chumsters? <laughs> These cute little fish are looking right at you. Meet the twin spot gobies. They have, uh, well, twin spots. And there's two of them, like twins. Hello. Hello. Uh, hang on. Which is their front and which is their back end? That's a good question. Their two-spotted fin is confusing to our eyes and even more confusing to the underwater world. In fact, they're also named the Crab Eye Goby because they pretend to be a crab to fool predators. Oops. And like twins, they obviously have a very close friendship. They even move in sync. Yeah, they have a funny little swimming style, not helped by the fact that those crafty eye spots completely confuse the eye. Let's take a closer look. Ah, there's the real eye. Hang on, or is that it? Oh, they're very clever little gobies, aren't they? Mmm, yummy sand. They're what's known as bottom feeders. They spend most of their time munching on sand to filter through any nibbles. So, are they twins or just Bezzy mates? Well, they're very, very close friends, if you get my meaning. Uh, no. Brace yourself, Jem. Romantic moment's coming. You see, they're more than just friends. They're in love. You're kidding. Nope. Gobies mate for life and are complete soulmates, which may explain why they are so in sync. Like our goby and shrimp, our twin spot gobies are together for good, looking after each other. Oh, forever friends. <laughs> well, hello there. Uh, talking of romance, wait until you hear about this smooth customer. Hi, I'm Napoleon. Napoleon Russ. How delightful to meet you, Gemma. Oh, and uh, you too, Napoleon. You see, this geezer's a real charmer. See how he's surrounded by ladies. <laughs> They're the ones without the hump. 
only the males have humps. It's thought they need them to balance out their big mouths. Yeah, what is that with a big old gob? Is it for all the kissing? Oh, I never want to know. <laughs> well, actually, I can tell you, he feeds on shells, so he needs it to crush them up. <sighs> anyway, back to the romance. Ooh la la. The Napoleon Rass likes to make friends with the ladies. In fact, he has lots of girlfriends who all hang out together under the protection of one macho male Napoleon, like this one. Hi there, ladies. Oh, hi, Napoleon. Hello. I mean, it seems a bit old-fashioned to me, but I guess some females just need protection. <laughs> oh, my... <laughs> What's more, when they're flirting, the hump darkens. Oh, so I, I guess they wear their heart on their hump, then. <laughs> you know, like heart and sleeve. So, just like our cute twin spot gobies, our Napoleon Rass has a group of friends who are a little more than just friends. Do you know what? It's tricky being friends in the ocean world. Let's take a look back at all our bezzy mates. <laughs> From the clownfish all the way to the Napoleon Rass, there's Ocean Buddies galore. Yeehaw! Oh, hey! It's great to be a clownfish, especially with their very own bouncy castle anemone. Imagine being so close to your friend, you copy them right down to their spots. Well, that's exactly what our pygmy seahorses do. Ah, oh, that's touching. <laughs> Mr Boxer Crab here carries his buddy, the anemone, on his pincers to use their sting as protection, but also for a spot of cheerleading. Then there's Mr Mantis Shrimp No Mates. Well, if you do insist on beating up crabs, shrimpy. Yeah, those crabs need sticking up for. Just like the cardinal fish hiding away with their mates, the spiky sea urchins. And our fragile glass shrimp knows a good coral when he sees one. The most annoying friend ever, the stick-on remoras, who decide who they want to hang around with and then won't leave them alone. Can't they take a hint? Hey, remora, leave me alone. Apparently not. Like this infuriating parasite. Now, that really is too close for comfort. Leave him alone, you evil parasite. Thank goodness for the cleaner rats and their fishy mates. They even communicate through dance. What a nice gang. Talking of gangs, our silvery, skillful schools of fish must be the greatest group of friends going. But you have to look the parts to fit into their cliquey circle. Next up, the goby and shrimp. Unlikely pals, but it seems they've hit it off. As long as the shrimp keeps their burrow nice and tidy, that is. And now for our special friends, the twin spot gobies. So twin-like they copy each other, and they're more than just friends. They're in love. Aw, so cute. You can't call Mr Napoleon Rass cute, but he does seem to have a way with the ladies. Well, hello. You know what, Jen? You might not always wash up and you don't always share your sweets with me, but I've got to say, after that lot, I'm quite happy to have you as my friend. Ah, thanks. So you don't mind me having your last sweetie, then? Hey, I was saving that for Colin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>